Hey guys, it's Rifle here again with another video supporting the Type 1 Control Close Hair Support. Uh, right off the bat, we were talking about the 12 Steps Execution Checklist. And so that's breaking down that Type 1 Control video uh, that I shared with you all. I've been getting uh, great feedback re regarding some of those uh, that routing and safety of flight video, which is breaking down the 12 steps. And so today we're going to cover the close air support check-in. So that's the aircraft talking to your JTAC or your FAC A, and followed by the situation update, which is then in turn the JTAC or FAC A speaking to his incoming supporting aircraft. When we're talking about the aircraft check-in, what we're having is someone, uh, imagine you've got your iPod or uh, your iPhone with you, you're just jamming to some tunes, but then this aircraft shows up, okay? You might not be able to see this guy, you might not even know he's coming out there, but he's going to reach out to you on your uh, frequency, and he's going to tell you who he is, what he's bringing to the fight, how long he's going to stay around for, and essentially those are the kind of meat and potatoes out of here, such as this example. Hawk 1-1, one, one. mission number, Alpha 2626, single, A-10, holding, Charlie 10, blocking, 6 to 10, two times, Mark 82s, full gun, targeting pod, abort, in the clear, how copy? So just following my cursor here, right, so like we saw in the example, the aircraft, so the controller call sign and the aircraft call sign. So in this case, uh, you know, something like, Backhand three zero. This is hog five five on uh, fires. Radio check, right? So right off the bat, he's saying hello. Is there anybody up on this push? And uh, once you've got him, that routing and safety of flight happens. And once uh, you've got that positive control and routing and safety of flight, then you know the JTAC can request the uh, fighter to fact check in or the aircraft check in. Mission number for DCS World, it really, it's administrative. Uh, I don't believe it has anything to do with DCS World whatsoever. Your number and type of aircraft were 2 by a 10s and this is the position that we're in. This is the altitude that we're in. So position, he could, his aircraft are always moving, right? So maybe he's picking a big dog balls feature out there or a known uh, town, something like that. And the ordinance is exactly, absolutely everything he is bringing to that fight. So it happens to be two AGM-65 Deltas, full gun, two GBU-12s, cockpit selectable fusing, or maybe he's stuck with one six eight eight. So the JTAC knows to, if he wants to do a ground lays. Time on station, we've got plus 30 minutes or one plus 30, depending on what kind of uh, time you think you'll be able to support your JTAC. And then afterwards you're looking at your types of sensors so a lightning AT flare sniper pod something like that what do you bring into the fight right so your laser laser spot tracker that's the the ability for the aircraft to be able to see what kind of laser designation is happening on the battlefield if the JTAC wanted to uh, designate or mark a target infrared so your IR marker right for those night type of uh, nighttime operations your video downlink okay that's the ability for the JTAC to see what the aircraft sees with its TGP however in DCS it is not simulated at that time so it's really a no factor digital capabilities kind of the same way if you're using uh, DA CAS or digitally uh, assisted close air support you could uh, zip your nine line up to uh, to the a10 uh, or other aircraft fac a right is he a jtac uh, so to speak in the sky and anything else the aircraft finds relevant uh, he should be able to say that abort code I would just say in the clear there's more than enough stuff we can get into the weeds later about authentication however unless DCS is simulating electronic warfare capabilities where the red team uh, in buddy spikes uh, server for example is listening into your comms then then that would be a uh, uh, an issue the next one here is the situation update so like the aircraft check-in it's the JTAC on the ground who doesn't understand what's going on and so what's happening is uh, the aircraft is telling him who he's got in the sky but now you turn the coin and so what's happening is uh, that 
pilot needs to understand intimately how he fits in in the world or scheme of things so he can best support that JTAC or the FAC A engaging all those targets. So what we're looking for really in the situation update is situational awareness to the pilot, what's happening, what he can expect to perform and service targets and the objective is to immerse the pilot uh, into what's happening on the ground. So right off the bat Okay, it looks like a lot of uh, meat and potatoes, if you will, and you don't have to get crazy like this, especially not for DCS. But the big ones to take away are really your threat, the targets, friendly, artillery, your clearance authority, ordnance, restrictions, and remarks. So what does all this stuff mean? Threat is super important. You want to be able to tell that pilot what is a hazard for you. Uh, out there. So your threats, like uh, the situation update sounded like, you know, small arms, man pads, RPGs, AAA. You could say the locations are unknown if your intelligence driven data does have uh, SAMs and AAA in the area. If you do know them, please, of course, you would pass them on and uh, potentially deal with those threats before servicing the JTAC's ground force commander's threats. The targets. Now we're, we were talking about threats to the JTAC and so that's what exactly this is. So if your targets in the AO are a few T-55s, we've got some BRDM and then dismounted troops, uh, two dozens worth. That's the kind of stuff that you want to be able to inform uh, the pilot on. The friendly disposition, this can be pretty challenging, right? So there's a number of ways that you can break this up. Uh, you know, in the past, I would just say something friendly special operations forces or observation post uh, overlooking east to west and where our position is no larger than 50 uh, meters north-south running on the mountain side, you know, and we're on the west side of the mountain. So giving him an, an example of what it is I can see, how many people I have, I'd be pr potentially several guys, you know, a couple snipers, canine with us, uh, things of that nature. Or, you know, if you're playing a, a all-for-nothing DCS game, and now you've got a couple of battalion size elements, then you want to kind of, you know, paint the picture about how big your forces are and generally where they are at. You know, where's their beginning line, where's the end line, so to speak, because things can look pretty crazy, uh, especially for the pilot. He's so high up there, he may not actually physically see you guys, but he needs to build that uh, three-dimensional box in his head of where everything is. The artillery, now that we're down here, is, you know, artillery, artillery, excuse me, what do they do? They fire big bullets into the sky, and that's obviously an issue, um, you know, as they fly through the airspace uh, for rotary wing as much as fixed wing. And so if you're not using any, uh, you don't even have to mention this at all. However, if you do have it and the guns are cold, you can say guns cold, which means they're not firing, you know, or the guns are hot, they're located at this location, and they're firing at this location, and you give them a max sword. And what that means is the highest, the apex of the trajectory of the uh, uh, artillery round, okay? So if it's 20,000 feet was the highest round uh, apex, I would give a 1,000 foot buffer and say all players stay above 21,000 feet. But we'll follow that in a, in a different video. I'll get into the weeds there. If you're the guy talking on the radio as your JTAC or FAC A, you're the clearance authority, all right? So you don't have to tell people that you're gonna clear people hot, but if you've got some kind of pretty crazy plan out there to give clearance to other people or potentially a FAC, JTAC to FAC, etc., or vice versa, you need to be able to uh, voice that, right? But if you're, the, if the guy talking is the uh, clearance authority, you don't have to mention it to anybody. Now the ordinance. Now that you've already mentioned what's uh, what's on the ground and you've already taken your aircraft check-in, so you can tell the A-10, for example, hey, we're planning on putting 30 mic mic to uh, soft skin vehicles uh, at this time, followed by reattacks of AGM-65s, for example, on uh, T-55s. Okay, so something of uh, that effect. And then the remarks and restrictions can be anything uh, that comes to the top of your head. All right. Uh, obviously, 
realistically you want to be able to say hey I'm a JTAC and I'm able you know to give you refined grids uh, I have these kind of optics uh, I can mark with 50 caliber uh, munitions where I have uh, 40 mic mic smoke uh, things of that nature right you want to be able to tell them that and any other things that may be a uh, restriction uh, or a hazard for the guy uh, once he comes low for shows of force or gun runs things of that nature okay this is really in the weeds not a lot of this stuff applies in uh, in uh, DCS uh, so I wouldn't get your head too wrapped around it but uh, that example that was given uh, I think really covers the bases there that concludes our third uh, installment video if you will the aircraft check-in and situation update I really hope this was uh, some good food for thought for everyone. Thanks a lot for some of the positive comments for me to keep doing these. And I promise that I understand the uh, quality uh, may not be as to some other videos out there, but I'm just passing some knowledge on. And uh, these are going to get better as, uh, as I keep investing in this. All right, thanks again uh, for your time. And until then, kill everything with everything simultaneously. Peace.